Shalom and welcome to Hebrew Bible Secrets with your host Rabbi Jeremy Beaton. We are reading today from the book of John starting at chapter 3. John chapter 3 verse 1. The rescue of the ten tribes, the Goyim. 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nacdemon, Nacodemus, a ruler of the Yehudim. 2. The same came to Yahushua by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from Elohim, for no man can do these miracles that you do, except Elohim be with him. 3. Yahushua answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say to you, except a man be born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of Elohim. 4. Nacdemon, Nacodemus, said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? 5. Yahshua answered, Verily, verily, I say to you, Except a man be born of Maim and of the Ruach set apart spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of Elohim. 6. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Ruach spirit is Ruach spirit. 7. Marvel not that I said to you, ye must be born from above. 8. The wind blows where it desires, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Ruach, set apart spirit. 9. Nacdemon, Nacodemus, answered and said to him, How can these things be? 10. Yahshua answered and said to him, Are you a rabbi of Israel, and do not know these things? 11. Verily, verily, I say to you, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen. And ye receive not our witness. 12. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of the things of Shemaim? 13. And no man has ascended up to the Shemaim, the heaven, but he that came down from the Shemaim, the heaven, the Son of Man. 14. And as Moshe, Musa, lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. 15. That whoever believes in him may have eternal life. 16. For Elohim so loved the world that he gave his only unique Son, that whoever believes in him should not be destroyed, but have everlasting life. 17. For Elohim did not send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world through him might be rescued. 18. He that believes on him is not judged, but he that believes not is judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Elohim. 19. And this is the judgment, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. 20. For whosoever that loves evil hates the light, neither comes to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. 21. But he that practices truth comes to the light, that his deeds be made manifest, that they are wrought in Elohim. 22. After these things came Yahshua and his disciples into the land of Yehuda, and there he stayed with them and was immersed. 23. And Jehuchanan, John, also was immersing in Ain, near to Salim, because there was much Maim water there, and they came and were immersed. 24. For Jehuchanan, John, was not yet cast into prison. 25. Then there arose a question between some of Yehuchanan, John's disciples, and the Yehudim about purifying. 
26. And there came to Yehokanan, John, and said to him, Rabbi, he that was with you beyond Yardan, Jordan, to whom you bear witness, behold, the same in mercies, and all men come to him. 27. Yehokanan, John, answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from the Shamaim, the heavens. 28. You yourselves bear witness, which I said, I am not the Messiah, but that I am sent before him. 29. He that has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. In this, my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. 31. He that comes from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He that comes from the Shamayim, the heaven, is above all. 32. And what he has seen and heard, that he testifies, no man receives his testimony. 33. He that has received his testimony has set to his seal that Elohim is true. 34. For he whom Elohim has sent speaks the words of Elohim. For Elohim gives not the ruah, the spirit, by measure to him. 35. The Av loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. 36. He that has faith on the Son has everlasting life, and he that obeys not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Elohim abides on him. So that now brings us to the end of chapter 3. So let's go back and have a look at some of the footnotes in chapter 3. So the first footnote we have is in verse 2. The same came to Yahshua by night and said to him, Rabbi. Okay, so let's have a look at this, Rabbi. So Rabbi is a perfectly legitimate title to use for a teacher and is the primary designation in Israel. Teachers in Israel have never had the title such as pastors or bishops. These are Greek and English anglicized titles. Okay. So let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 3. Yeshua answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say to you, except a man, okay, so let's have a look at this, except, except a man. So we have here this word for man being a midrash term for the nations or ten tribes is literally referred to as Adam. Please see the footnote in Ezekiel 34, 31 to understand this discourse which is about the tribes of Israel who were called the Ten Tribes. So let's have a look at Ezekiel 34, 31. So Ezekiel 34, 31 and it reads, And you, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are Adam. And I am your power, says the Master Yahweh. Okay, so we have a footnote for Adam. So let's have a look at that quickly. So we have the house of Israel described as a man and literally Adam. This term is for Gentiles only and was understood for non-Jews. We read in the Talmud the following. Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai said, the graves of Gentiles do not cause ritual impurity in a dwelling, as it says in Ezekiel 34:31. Now you, Israel, are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture. You are man, Adam. You, Israel, the subject of the verse, are called man, Adam. And Gentiles are not called man, Adam. And that's the Talmud Bava. Metzia 114b. The first passage explains to us what or how you get ritual purity 
in a house or tent, which the tent is taken from Numbers 19.14. The man who died in the tent was part of Israel, who would make the others ritually unclean for seven days. Therefore, the term man, or Adam, is really applied to the people of Israel. So these Gentiles are not outsiders, but those ones who were part of the northern tribes of Israel. The second reference, one who uses the official anointing oil that has been consecrated to smear on an animal or vessels is innocent of violating the holiness of the oil. To smear on Gentiles or corpses is innocent. Certainly an animal and vessels, as it says in Exodus 30.32, it shall not be smeared on flesh of man, Adam. And an animal and vessel or vessels are not man. One who smears on corpses is also innocent, since it is dead. It is called corpse and not a man. However, why is one who smears on Gentiles innocent? They are men. No, as it says, Ezekiel 34, 31. Now you, Israel, are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture. You are man, Adam. You, Israel, the subject of the verse, are called man, Adam. And Gentiles are not called man, Adam. The Talmud, Keritot 6b. So we also have here, if we read Exodus 30, 32, we learn that if a Hebrew person smears oil on Adam, or man, that he is liable. This explains this oil would only be poured on Israel, meaning only a high priest or a king is worthy of having oil poured upon them. If it is a high priest or king or prophet, of Israel, then they are from the twelve tribes of Israel, meaning that they are not Gentiles, as we would normally understand. The passages apply to Israel only. Okay, so if you want more understanding, you could read Numbers 19.14, Exodus 30.32, Ezekiel 34.31, and Exodus 30, 32, which I just mentioned. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is a continuation. Except a man be born from above. Okay, so let's have a look at this from above. The heart can only be circumcised by Yahweh, as stated in the Torah, as Brit Hat Lev in the Hebrew language. This is mentioned in Deuteronomy 10, 16 and 30 and 6. To obey the Torah is a sign of a sure circumcised heart. Those that do not obey the Torah or call it a document of the Yehudim cannot be qualified to be called born from above at all. It is questionable that they are even redeemed. Let's have a look at um, Deuteronomy 10.16. So Deuteron Deuteronomy 10.16. And it reads, Therefore circumcise the foreskin of your heart, and do not be stubborn any more. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, Deuteronomy 13, 6, quickly. Deuteronomy 13, 6, and it reads, And Yahweh your power will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love Yahweh your power with all your heart and with all your soul, that you may live. Okay, so we have a footnote for circumcise your heart. So let's have a look at that. So it is Yahweh who gives the new birth with what we term born from above. It is not new but an ancient term, while many today make it sound like a buzzword. 
It is not new at all. When you walk with Yahweh, you must come to him with a full repentant heart to turn to Torah, and he will circumcise it and give you the new birth. That happens via the keter, the crown, the king, passing through the middle pillar to the feet, the malkut, reaching into the kingdom. This is the path even Balaam's donkey saw, where the Malak Yahweh was standing on the narrow path, which is in Numbers 22-24, the middle path, not to the right or to the left. Okay? So that's Deuteronomy 10.16 and 30 and 6. So we have um, more continuation of the footnote. What if their pastor has taught them incorrectly? The individual must still have a heart that desires to obey Torah if they are born of above. Even if the pastor teaches otherwise, their heart will always yearn for obedience and the set-apart spirit will convict them to do so. John 16.13 Although at this juncture the judgment does fall on the bad pastor, but sometimes individuals will respond by saying, we are under favour and not under the law, when they do not even know or realise what they are saying is an offence to Yahweh. These are only churchy words and have nothing to do with what Yahweh thinks. This means they have decided themselves that Elohim's law is not good enough for them to keep, which means to guard as a soldier does his country. And they think that they can live any life they like and gain entry into the kingdom to come. Note that this is the individual who has decided this for themselves and not what Yahweh has decided for them. What Yahweh thinks can be read in Matthew 7.21. They stand judged and unless that all important seed of Elohim is in them, they cannot escape judgment by mere words or putting the burden onto their pastor alone. If a person is only able to do three commandments but they do not have the instructions on how to do the rest, they are judged with leniency and allowed to enter the kingdom and learn Torah. And that's in Isaiah 2 and 3. But if an individual is not willing, meaning they do not have a heart of flesh and are rebellious, then they are not saved and will be cast off to remain outside like dogs, according to Revelation 22.15. In the scriptures, everything is connected together and one cannot take one verse here and one there to come up with something new. Many who have taken and twisted John 1.17 to do away with the Torah will regret it in or on the day of judgment because doctrines are not made from one verse. The individual ambiguous verses help us to realise that we should always interpret scripture with clear verses from scripture. This way we never go astray. The model that we always need to look at is how our forefathers lived and we will never go wrong. I want to point out one very important principle. In England when a new law is introduced the parliament sits and debates the new statute or code of law for months be between 645 ministers and then the law is passed and it is forwarded to the House of Lords to 740 members where it is also debated, discussed before it gets implemented in the laws of the land. Yet is it not ironic for the individuals out there that one can be so naive to believe that Yahweh's laws just became abrogated and no one knew about it and there were no debates in heaven or even on the earth. Christians take note. So I want to go back because there's a few more footnotes in there that I want to read. So let's have a look at um, John 16.13. So 
So we're talking about the set apart spirit here. We'll convict them to do to do so. John 16.13. So let's have a look at that. John 16.13, and it reads, And when she, the Ruach, the set apart spirit of truth, is come, she will guide you into all truth. For she will not speak of her own initiative, but whatever she shall hear, that shall she speak. And she will show you things to come. Okay, so we have a footnote here. And when she, the Ruach, set apart spirit, let's have a look at this. So the set apart spirit is feminine. And this may come as a shock to many, but this is what the early Nazarene followers of Yahshua also believe. This is what Oregon had to say about a text known as the book of Hebrews written in the Semitic tongue. On the set apart spirit, Oregon, 185 to 232 CE, said, If anyone should lend credence to the gospel according to the Hebrews, where the Saviour himself says, My mother, the set-apart spirit, took me just now by one of my hairs and carried me off to the great Mount Tabor. Oregon's commentary on John. So Yahshua called the Ruach his mother. It is important to note that in Hebrew all words carry gender, whether masculine or feminine. So when the translators translated these texts to Greek, they changed the gender from feminine she to the masculine he. When the text was translated into the English language, which has either a he, she or it gender, this further compounds the problem because you cannot call a Hebrew word an it, as they have done in some places in the text. The text was naturally carried over from the Greek to the English with the incorrect gender. Okay. So there's another footnote here. Set apart spirit of truth is come. She will guide you into all truth. Okay, so let's see. She. So she will guide you into all truth. So let's have a look at this, she. In both Semitic texts, the Hebrew and Aramaic are either masculine or feminine. But this was mixed up in the translation of the Hebrew word ruach and Aramaic ruka, spelled R-U-C-H-A, with an it or a he, gender switch. The Hebrew gender of the ruach is feminine and perfectly matches with Yahweh, also having a feminine side in the plurality of Yahweh, which is clearly evident in Isaiah 66, 13, where he tells you that he will comfort you as a mother. It is clear to us, looking at the Aramaic, that whoever did the translation of these words deliberately chose to stick to the modified Greek mindset carrying it over into the Aramaic as well. Okay, so we have one more footnote. Guide ye into all truth. So let's have a look at this. So Torah truth is like a mother, because she is the motherly side of Yahweh. All we know is that Yahweh is a polarity of lights. Okay, so that brings us to the end of John 16.13. So we have a few few more footnotes. Let's have a look. So we have also Matthew 7.21. So Matthew 7.21 and it reads, Not everyone that says to me, Adonai, Adonai, Master, Master, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of Shamaim of heaven. But he that does the will of my Av, which is in the Shamayim, which is in the heaven. Okay, so we have a footnote here for shall enter 
into the kingdom of Shamayim. So let's have a look at this. So it reads, He is not taking the place of Abba Yahweh, as many have incorrectly placed Yahshua before the Abba, making him the ultimate rescue of our souls. And he struts breaking the law according to some. The rescue is through the covenants in the Torah to the Yashraelites, but Yahshua is placing himself as a rabbi, a teacher, to say, do not reject his teachings or his Torah. In this Lord context, he is simply reiterating the faith for the faithful to be Torah observant, and those that do not will be judged and not enter the coming kingdom. Okay? So he's basically saying, you know, to hear and to do, to keep the commandments. So we have another footnote, which is, he that does the will of my Av, my father. Okay, let's have a look at this. So we have the will of Abba in Shamayim, in the heavens, is for us to be following and obeying the Mosaic Torah, and if we are not, then we are not in his will. Okay? So that's Matthew 7.21. And we also have a continuation, another footnote. So to enter the kingdom and learn Torah, which is Isaiah 2 and 3. So let's have a look at Isaiah 2 and 3. So Isaiah 2 and 3, and it reads... And many people shall go and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the temple of Elohim, of Yaakov. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Sion shall go forth the Torah and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Okay, so we have a footnote here for teach us his ways. So we have here Torah being taught to the nations, okay? So Torah is being taught to the nations. So the nations are being taught the commandments. Okay, so we have another footnote here. And the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. So the word of Yahweh. So the word of Yahweh is Torah, okay? So the instructions are in the first five books of Moses. There you have the Torah. Okay, so we have a foot, another footnote from the continuation. So we have here, And are rebellious, then they are not saved and will be cast off to remain outside like dogs, according to Revelation 22.15. So let's have a look at Revelation 22.15. So Revelation 22, 15, and it reads, For outside are dogs, and those enchanted with drugs, and those who whore, and murderers, and idolaters, and whoever so loves and practices falsehood. Okay, so we have a footnote for outside are dogs. So let's have a look at this. So anyone who is not in Israel, such as unsaved Gentiles, are outside. Note, no Yashali obeying Torah is outside, including Judah is in. Dogs meaning Gentiles. Okay, so then we have another footnote here for falsehood. So let's have a look at this. So anyone who makes or practices a falsehood, such as in Exodus 23, 1 to 7, many religious leaders of the world will fall into this trap because they have made up a falsehood and then deceived the common people who ended up following, following it. The greater part of the judgment will fall on those types of leaders. Okay, so we have another continuation footnote. So many who have taken and twisted John 1.17 to do away with the Torah will regret it on the day of judgment. So let's have a look at John 
So Job 117, and it reads, For a Torah was given by Moshe, Musa, prophesying favor and truth to come to fulfillment through Yahshua, the Messiah. Okay? So believe, believing on Yahshua is not enough. Yahshua was telling you to keep the commandments, and that's what we must do. Keep the commandments. Okay, so, so let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 4. So Nakdimon, Nakadima, said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? So how can a man be born? So let's have a look at this. So we have here the same Midrash term, man or Adam, which is taking us to Ezekiel 34, 36 and Ezekiel 37. It is the ten tribes and not Yahudim that Yahshua is talking about. Yahshua is talking to a Pharisee and is himself a Pharisee. He is not telling Nicodemus that he needs saving because Nicodemus is already saved. But he is explaining how the nations will be saved and rejoin Israel. Okay? So if you want more understanding with that, read Ezekiel 34. 36 and Ezekiel 37. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 5. Yahshua answered, Verily, verily, I say to you, except a man be born of Mayim, water. Okay, so let's have a look at this, except a man. So the term man is a Midrash term, and mostly in scripture relates to the general word for the ten scattered tribes and the general nations. It is not ascribed to the Yehudim. Here the term that Yahshua is using is ascribed to the prophet Ezekiel 34-31 for the plan of the house of Israel. How Yahshua starts telling Nicodemus these people will join Israel in the future. So let's go to the next footnote which is a continuation. The Ruach set apart spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom. So let's have a look at he. So who is the he? This is the discussion of the ten tribes who become Gentiles. Okay, so it's talking about the ten tribes. So we also have cannot enter into the kingdom of Elohim. So let's have a look at this. So Yahshua is repeating what Yahweh said in Deuteronomy 10 and 6. This is something that Yahweh does and not man. The seed that is planted by the Father through the set-apart spirit into the individual is what we can safely term circumcising the heart, which is nurtured, would grow into a Torah tree. Okay? So... We have a footnote there for Deuteronomy 10 and 6. So let's have a look at that. Deuteronomy 10 and 6. <clears throat> so let's go to the next footnote, which is in... Verse 7, marvel not that I said to you, ye must be born from above. Okay, so ye, let's have a look at this. The term is plural, you, and addressing everyone of the ten tribes, excluding the Yehudim. It is not addressing Nicodemus or the Hebrew people in the temple, but it relates to the ten tribes of Israel. The whole dialogue is about the ten tribes and their return. Okay, so we have another footnote which is a continuation. Must be born from above. So let's have a look at this. So why are we instructed not to marvel? This is because this is a Torah teaching and not one that is new. Yahshua is merely testing Nicodemus. 
Note, Nicodemus believed Yahshua, but never left Judaism and continued to be a Torah teacher for all of Israel. This is important because he was already saved and did not go to get another immersion. The whole conversation that Yahshua speaks about is about the lost house of Israel. Okay, so Yahshua is talking about the lost ten tribes of Israel. Okay. So let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 8. The wind blows where it desires, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Ruach, set apart spirit. Okay, so let's have a look at this set apart spirit. So the spirit of Yahweh, or more correctly, Abba Yahweh, blows as a power throughout the world and brings people into conviction and subjection of the Abba in heaven. So there is nothing to marvel at. It blows in India and, in, and it blows in China. The set apart spirit, the mother from above, is not restricted by visa restrictions and border controls. The point should be pretty clear. She implants a seed to her children received from Abba Yahweh, those who belong to the Abba. Okay. So let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 10. Yahshua answered and said to him, Are you a rabbi of Israel and do not know these things? Okay, so let's have a look at this. So Yahshua confirmed to Nicodemus that what he was teaching was not new, but old. So Nicodemus should understand. He was merely referring to the concept new birth from above, already illustrated in the Torah in Deuteronomy 10.16 and taking him back to Ezekiel 36.27. Okay. So for more instruction on that, read Deuteronomy 10.16 and Ezekiel 36.27. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 11. Verily, verily, I say to you, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Verily, verily, I say to you, we. So we have a footnote here for we. The term we means we, the Hebrew people, the rabbin. So the rabbin, the teachers, okay. So let's go, we have a continuation, another footnote. And you receive not our witness. So let's have a look at this. So the you is plural, so which is not referring to Nicodemus, but to the ten scattered tribes of Israel. Since Nicodemus is not rejecting what the Yehudim have to say about the Torah, since he is a mighty teacher of it. Okay. So let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 12. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not. Okay, so we've got ye again. The you is plural. Okay. So we have another footnote, which is in continuation. Believe not. How shall ye believe if I tell you of things of Shamayim, heaven? Okay, so how shall ye Let's have a look at this. So Yeshua is talking about the 12 tribes and not about Nicodemus. This is why the word is plural, you, and not in singular. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 13. And no man has ascended up to the Shamayim. So no man, let's have a look at this. So this includes Enoch and Elijah. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 14. And as Moshe, Musa, lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So let's have a look at this. So we have Numbers 21 and 9. So let's have a look at Numbers 21 and 9.
from Numbers 21 and 9, and it reads, And Moshe, Musa, made a serpent of brass, and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass, that if a serpent had bitten any man, when he looked upon the serpent of bronze, he lived. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 15. That whoever believes in him, okay, that whoever, so let's have a look at this, only the stock of Abraham. Okay, so we have another footnote, continuation, believes in him. So let's have a look at this. It's very important to make the connection. What was it that we should believe in Moses? Was he the Messiah? No. Was he Yahweh? No. Then what exactly is Yahshua pointing to? He is pointing to Torah and the authority that was bestowed upon Moses by Yahweh that needed to be believed. And that authority was via the documents we have come to know and love the Torah. What if Moses came with the Quran? Then should we believe him? The answer is no, because that is not the authority of Abba Yahweh, but Allah, who is the deity of Islam. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is a continuation. That he gave his only unique son, that whoever believed in him. Okay, so his only unique son, that whoever. So let's have a look at this. So the stock of Abraham, the sons of Israel. Okay, and we have another footnote, a continuation. Believes in him should not be destroyed. So let's have a look at this. So the Greek word Strong's G622 ap ol lu me. So A P O L L O M E Apolumi has a meaning of destruction, such as annihilation of the soul and not eternal conscious punishment. See footnote Matthew 10.28 for further reading into this. Okay, so let's have a look at Matthew 10.28. So Matthew 10.28 reads... And fear them not which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in Sheol. Okay, so we have a footnote for Sheol. So let's have a look at this. When the rebellious Malachim, angels, demons, and the devil will be thrown into the lake of fire for eternal conscious everlasting punishment according to Revelation 20 and 10. They will suffer forever. In reality the soul of every human being unless it is redeemed or unless it is a redeemed soul it is not eternal and will not be allowed to live. The Torah commands capital punishment which is death. So in likeness, the capital punishment for the soul after torment in Sheol is destruction or cessation of life. The soul is clothed with eternity only if you adhere to Torah covenants. The one verse which speaks about eternal conscious torture is Revelation 14 and 10 for some individuals and it is also open to debate since there is no second witness. The demon controlling the beast would be eternally cast and punished, but humans would burn to ashes. 
humans are not punished in hell forever. Okay? So if you want more understanding on that, go to Revelation 14.10. Okay? Which speaks about eternal conscious torture. Alright, so let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 18. He that believes on him is not judged. So let's have a look at this. So the him is the Father in heaven. So faith in Abba Yahweh will open up a door of revelation. The Yehudim already believed in the Father. They do not need to be converted as they are under the Torah covenants. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is a continuation. But he that believes not is judged. Okay, so, but he, let's have a look at this. The he in both statements is referring to the Gentile or the heathen. These are the ones who do not know Yahweh. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is a continuation. That he believes not is judged. Okay, let's have a look at this. To translate this Greek word, Strong's 2919, which is Carino, spelled K A R E E N O, as condemned, as most Bibles do, is to make this sound so harsh. Yet Yahshua did not for one second mean it in the way we have all understood it. Otherwise, the statement in verses 16 and 17 would be meaningless. The Son did not come to throw everyone into the lake of fire, as wrongly taught. He is talking about an earthly judgment, that if Yahweh was to judge everyone here on the earth, they are all guilty. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is another continuation. Already, because... He has not believed, so let's have a look at this, he has not believed, so there is no Torah requirement for such, so this is a contradiction, okay, so that's a contradiction there, so let's go to the next footnote which is in verse 19, and this is the judgment that light has come into the world. Okay, let's have a look at this. Light has come into the world. So this is a reference to the speaking Torah, light. Psalms 109 and 105. So believe in Abba Yahweh and obey the written light, which is the Torah. We must do the works of the Torah to glorify Elohim in our lives, as that is the fruit of our true report. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote which is a continuation, has come into the world, and men love darkness. Okay, and men, let's have a look at this. So the same Midrash, idiomatic expression, men, for nations or Gentiles, here signifies non-Israel, or the ten tribes, who were scattered, that they loved their pagan ways so much, that they did not want to obey Torah, or listen to the Messiah. Not much has changed since then. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is another continuation. And men love darkness. So let's have a look at this, love darkness. Wickedness, the ways of the world, non-Torah observance. Many still do not want to keep the principles of the Torah. And we are not just talking about the world, but this includes Christendom as well. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is another continuation. Rather than light, because their deeds were evil. So let's have a look at this. Their works were against Torah, as is most of the world. So calling yourself Christian is not enough. Obedience to the Torah is paramount. Okay, so it's all about doing the commandments and not just calling yourself a Christian and going to church. You have to do the commandments. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 20. For whosoever, let's have a look at this, 
So the term whosoever here and in other passages is applied midrashically to the Gentiles who hated anything to do with Torah observance. The Hebrew people never hated Torah but fell short in doing it. But even today they do keep the Torah trustworthily. While the Gentile world, including many in Christendom, hate the Torah observance. Okay, so we have another continuation. That does evil hates the light. Okay, let's have a look at this. So the light here is the idiomatic expression for the Torah, written by Moses. So those who want to live in worldly sin will hate the Torah as it reveals their sin and shows them to be guilty and condemned. However, the same Torah also reveals light and life. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is in verse 21. But he that practices truth comes to the light. So let's have a look at this, he that practices truth. So to practice truth means to practice the written Torah. There is no argument of whether we do it mechanically or not, but to keep it. Even if someone only keeps them mechanically, it is better than not doing it at all. Yahweh looks for obedience and not how we do it. For example, one may light the candles on the start of the custom Sabbath on Friday sunset, a rabbinic tradition, and one may not light the candles. Does that mean Adonai will condemn the one who lights the candles, opposed to the one who does not? Lighting the candles is an instruction derived out of the oral Torah, and there is nothing wrong with that. It is good for teaching the children about the Sabbath. The real true Sabbath was the Hanuk sunrise to sunset day. The Easterners do not really care whether commandment keeping is mechanical or not, and neither does Yahweh. While the West lives in denial of the Torah and deliberately abrogates it, and also is predominantly erecting a building and calling it a church, trying to replace the faith of our forefathers, rooted in synagogues and not churches. The irony is that this church is a word which does not exist in any copies of the original manuscripts and is a later translation trying to give credibility to a man-made building and religion. Okay, so let's go to the next footnote, which is a continuation. But he that practices truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in Elohim. Okay, so let's have a look at this, wrought in Elohim. So we have here the only ones who are willing to have these deeds exposed are therefore the Jews who obey Torah, while Christians make excuses that my pastor told me not to do it, which means they are living in sin and do not know the difference between good and evil, as it is the Torah that brings forth these differences out. The ones who do the Torah are the true followers of Yahweh, and the ones who do not are not. Okay, so that now brings us to the end of John chapter 3. So I thank you for watching and I hope to see you on the other side. This is Rabbi Jeremy Beaton saying thank you for watching and Shalom Shalom. Baruch Shem Kivad Makuto Le'olam Va'ed Will never be the name of his esteemed kingdom forever and ever and ever. Amen.